What up channel, it's 4Play, and this is a video of me playing on a bad host, and that's what we're going to do today. Today's commentary topic is video of me playing on a bad host. Actually, it's adapting to playing on a bad host. I kind of wanted to talk about it, and another thing I want to do is someone actually told me recently, um, how come commentators don't, someone tweeted at me, in case you guys don't know the wonderful world of Twitter, someone tweeted at me and said, hey 4Play, how come commentators don't ever post videos of them doing bad? So I said, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and this is a video of me not doing so good. I go 30 and 30 in this gameplay, I believe. And I'm playing on a California host. I live in North Carolina, so it's East Coast to West Coast. And I am the worst West Coast player ever, or at least I think I am. However, I do go clutch and potentially win my team the game because I'm an X Factor. And that'll be towards the end of this video when you watch it. Uh, it it's funny. Someone also said, wow, and a lot of the scrims I watch on um, burn scrims and stuff, you're always coming up big and making plays. And that's what I preach to you guys. It is not about being the best. It is about being the best when it matters. About being clutch and honestly try to take over that X Factor role. You can't just call yourself that. You actually got to prove it. You got to go clutch when it matters. And you're not always going to go clutch. So don't get down on yourself when you don't. But I do kind of want to talk about some things. And that's playing on a bad host. A lot of you guys are West Coast players. A lot of you live in England. Um, not England, but like the UK in general or just overseas. And you have to play on American host. And that's different than playing on uh, East Coast to West Coast, I'm sure. However, there are little things you can do that can help you adapt to playing on a host that is far away. And I kind of wanted to address them in this video. If you notice, the people we're playing in this video is High Hopes. This is the team that beat Obey at UMG a long time ago. This is the team that actually beat us in um, at Dallas. And I kind of wanted to show this clip because not only did that guy get turned on there, but watch this. Rest in peace to that guy. Michi just got turned on really hard. I know you guys saw it. If you guys want, rewind that. Rest in peace. Let's give him a moment of silence before I keep talking. Hold on. All right, I'm back. Um, you know me. We like to have fun on this channel. So, Michi, if you're watching this, that's all in fun. Nothing personal. I've been turned on in my day. But those are back-to-back, -back, though. That was pretty good. But anyway. So, right now, currently in this game, I'm sitting 6 and 7. I'm negative. I think I do bring it back and go... 30 and 30 and that's not like a horrible game but i think i'm 30 and 30 but i'm the best on my team i don't think there was anyone that had more kills than me and we barely win this game and we only played one scrim on their host because my team was just complaining the whole time and that's one of the biggest things you have to get over when you're playing on a bad host is listening to your teammates complain but let's go over the steps so step one to playing on a bad host is addressing how bad the host really is don't just be the person that goes oh my god this is so laggy and we all know those people. Um, I actually have really good friends that are like that. And they, they just complain about the host right away. And the host really isn't that bad. Sometimes the host is going to be horrible. If it's east to west, it's bad. Or if the person hosting has a horrible host and there are brothers downloading anime or something, then that host is going to be crazy bad. So address that the host is bad. And if it is bad, what you have to do is you need to play around that. So how you placate your game around a bad host is... You need to put yourself in positions first. If you notice right now in this gameplay, we have to push inside this hard point. That's horrible when a host is bad because a lot of the time when you're going against a host, he's going to have that first shot. So what you need to do is get to the hard point first. Make sure that you're in a, in a position where you utilize like the space around you. So for example, if you're playing inside this barn area, a lot of people like to call it red, including myself, then you want to make sure you play the head glitches. Play, this, play the spots that you might not play as much because you're on a good host or you're just more confident in your gameplay, try to desensitize your gameplay and don't be as confident. And the, the reason I say that is because you want to make them reach their full potential while playing you. So make them hit the tougher shots. Make them come up clutch when they're trying to get to you. Because even when you're, when you're watching corners on certain areas, there's no way that you're going to win certain gunfights just because of the fact that he's going to come around that corner and he won't show up as quick. Um, there's just multiple reasons. And even if he does, watch this. I'm going to get turned on too. That one's not as bad. Hold on, I get turned on in that. So, I don't know who turned on me there. I think it was Michi. Michi probably just said, hey, that's payback for play. But yeah, that's, that's one of the disadvantages to playing on a bad host. Um, things like that are going to happen, and you can't get frustrated in it. And you could put a million shots in people, but the, the biggest problem is when people are far away, those shots are not going to hit like they normally would. It just happens. Uh, I know all of you guys have had that happen, and you guys 
you know, you, you all just have to play through that. And that's one of the things. So the first thing is desensitize your gameplay. Go to positions first. Like, try to rotate in hard points earlier. In CTF, use more head glitches than you normally would. If you're an objective player, try to be a little bit more sneaky. You know, don't have as much confidence um, in yourself as you normally do. And I know that's bad for me to say because I'm always preaching have confidence in your gameplay and stuff. But you need to be able to play on a bad host. And the first step is desensitizing your gameplay. So, second step is going to be um, don't be scared to play campy. And I know that's like, wow, really? You're going to camp? And yes, I'm telling you, in competitive gaming, this is my motto. You're here to win. You're not here to make friends. Okay, so no friends. You're here to win. I don't care if you need to lay in boxes, lay in bushes, lay in garbage cans, open up the drawer right there in that room and hide in that. You do what you got to do because this is about winning. And no one's ever going to remember the fact that you hid in a drawer um, <laughs> to win the game. People are going to remember that you won the game. All right? So don't play to make friends. You want to make sure that you're always constantly going going to spots and laying down if you need to. Make them make the mistake. Um, I've talked about that before in a commentary as well, where you want to make the other team make a mistake on you, and you want to try to come up big for your team um, in that aspect. Because sometimes if you're, if you're in a hard point and you're playing with a sub, you need to make them come to you, lay down. You, you'll get one kill, and then maybe you can pick up the second because the, the, the guy might not see you um, as well as he normally would. Or pr pretty much anything like that. So, and then another thing that you want to do is try to keep calm. Try to keep your ke like your team calm because it's easy to get frustrated when the host is horrible. It's it's easy to say what he should have died. I shot him and just keep complaining. But when you keep composure, you focus on on uh, like quote unquote, like the mission at hand, I guess if you will. Um, you're not worried about what's going on necessarily with the host. You're more focused on winning the game. And another thing that you want to do is. This is when you got to make sure that your strats are crisp. Try to stick to your strats, especially when you're playing on search and it's a bad host. Everyone's like, oh, search is the best game type to play on when it's a bad host. And I, I agree with that. Like if you have a choice to play respawn game types or search, you want to make sure that you play search on a bad host. Um, just due to the fact that it's easier to kind of sneak around. Um, you, it's one life. You know what I mean? All the time in my competitive career, we used to always, uh, you know how you used to be able to choose the map sets like, okay, we're going to host um, Hardpoint and CTF, or no, we're going to host Hardpoint, and then the other team would be like, all right, we're going to get CTF, and then you'd say, okay, we got Surge. You want to make sure that you're always hosting the the respawn game types uh, when it comes to the host, just because you, you don't want to have to play respawn game types on a bad host, because it can just get really frustrating. In fact, in this game, me going 30 and 30, leading my team in kills and still winning, that's kind of ridiculous. You know, like, that really doesn't happen too much, because... Most of the time, if people like that can run around and get three pieces, um, if the host is, is that bad, then, yeah, there's something you got to adapt to. But that's pretty much my tips and tricks to playing on a bad host. I wanted to do a video on it, and the clutch part of this video is coming up. As you can notice, we're losing right here, so I'll kind of do a breakdown here. Um, I, I want to switch this commentary. When, when I'm doing iGames, this is kind of going to be what iGame is about, me breaking down my gameplay while I was doing it. As you notice, with 10 seconds left, I tried to start a rotation. And they were already set up. You see that guy was laying down, just like we talked about before. I know I need to take over wood control. I'm going to see the guy in there. I'm going to end up getting that kill. I'm going to see him go up top first, so I'm going to try to take over down low. Once I get taken out, you got to check where my respawn is. Obviously, my respawn is horrible. They're up about 30 right now. I'm going to try to get this nade in. I see my teammates take it over, throw the nade away, try to kill the guy cutting mid-street. And right, ha right now, we don't have anyone in the hill, and they're calling in a strike. So I want to make sure I spread out. I swear I missed that barely. I don't even know how I missed that. I'm going to end up getting a kill because I knew that he spawned at stable side. So right now, they gave up the good spawn. Um, with 30 seconds left, we still know that we need this hill time. So instead of running around and getting spawn control, I'm going to let the guy who spawns up last, my anchor, get it. And I'm going to focus on cutting off the yellow. And we want to force um, a yellow granny spawn. Because once you're in this situation forcing a yellow granny spawn then you want him to spawn um, over there and have to come through the alley. You're going to notice I saw a guy cross towards gas. I'm going to call that out. I'm going to try to nade down low, and that's going to be like a spotter nade. You want to throw those nades if you're not sure if there's a guy coming up. And sometimes when you throw that nade, you're going to hear the guy yell. This is a clutch two-piece, by the way, because I held the anchor. So, like, once I got that kill, I'm going to come up here and get the three. Obviously, that's a huge three-piece, so we're going to get control of it again. But once you throw a spotter grenade you're going to hear the opposing team yell. So you may not have the intention of getting the kill with that, but you could throw it, hear them yell grenade, or sometimes you'll get an X, or um, even it, it could hit him. You know, like, it could bounce off a wall and hit him. You're like, holy shit, like, I, there's a guy down there. 
Um, I do that on occasion sometimes. I'll try to throw, like, random spotter grenades just to see well, what's going on, I guess. Um, but, yeah, so now we have a lead. It's impossible for us to lose. We're still holding hard point coming up clutch. When, when I do eye games, that's what I'm kind of excited for. Um, just doing that little random breakdown right there kind of got me excited to talk about competitive and do eye games and stuff. But, yeah, this has been my video playing on a bad host. I hope I didn't ramble too much. There were so many notes that normally I write or I wanted to write down to talk about. But I, I do all these commentaries freelance straight off the top of my head. Tell you exactly how I feel. So this is four play from Team Envious, Icons Black, and the Four Play Gang. Until next time, you guys are the best. Keep dominating your game. Peace. What up, Four Play Gang? I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. Adapting to playing on a bad host. Definitely a good subject. A lot of people talk to me about. Also, I see a lot of people complaining about it. If you can, favorite, comment, like, subscribe. Get at me on Twitter. Tweet at me if you have any commentaries that you'd like to see. It's become a lot faster for me to do that than check my inbox messages on YouTube just because I get spam more on there than Twitter. So until next time, keep dominating. Peace.